Man, I can never fold these dang things. So, hey, Namaskar everyone. How are you? Hopefully everybody's been doing fantastic. Listen, if you're new to the channel, thanks for stopping by and checking it out. I hope you're going to stick around. If you're already a subscriber, thank you and welcome back. As always, welcome back it means we are on another adventure. And that also means that you're going to want to know where we are and what we're doing. We are in Canton, Ohio. Akron, Canton area. Um, and today, we're going to be checking out maps. Not that one. And to even make it more confusing for you, there's going to be pancakes. So if you're ready for today's adventure, I suggest you get off the couch, you get ready, and let's go. We are right here. Right here. That is fantastic. Gotta go. <laughs> oh, shoot. Look at all of them. I think they're ready to kick my ass. Harden saliva. You're okay. You're okay. For watching my channel. Jesus, God, Mamma Mia, look what we got. Shh. I said there's people still sleeping. Calm down. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. I told you she was afraid of bridges. Do not stop it now. That is the starting point of the trail. I, I guess. I don't know. You can start at the beginning or you can start at the end. I don't think it matters wh where you start at. Uh, but wherever you start, that's your starting point. <laughs> oh shit. That's why I tell you, take a sip. <sighs> History. Better Malanga. Okay, so we are at the Canton Akron Airport. Um, actually on the west side of the grounds. Um, we are at Maps, which it's a building right over there. It's a museum. Stands for Military Aviation Restoration Society. It was started in 1990, I believe by 14 people. It was originally um, in a building, a maintenance building um, at, the, at the airport. Um, and that's how it started. This is basically for Northeast Ohio, anyway, this is a big deal. It's a, it's a, uh, it's a library. It's a research center. Um, the people that started this wanted to share the history of aviation and how it affected society, how it affected uh, how how we uh, deal with airplanes now. Um, yeah, if you're looking beside me, it's a lot of it is outside. Uh, there's some inside. I'm going to be able to show you what I can. I've never been here. Um, I've been past it many times. Always wanted to come here. And today would be that day. Why is it so busy, you ask? Because they have different events here. Um, and I'll post a link in the website. Uh, in the description. They have car shows here. They, I think in a couple weeks ago they had a knife show. They have... Uh, uh, fishing and hunting shows uh, but I think the car show would be really cool um, just to see some of the old cars against the planes and stuff um, normally it's, I, I believe it's $15 to come in here uh, and you can have a, uh, a guided tour you can do it unguided um, obviously if you're doing a, a guided tour um, you're going to get a lot more information than I ever could tell you most of these people that work here are retired military so you could have a army nurse showing you something or you could have a air force pilot you have general here uh telling you some history about the uh aviation uh museum itself or some of the airplanes you might see i don't know much about airplanes i know how they work i know how air ailerons work i know the rudder i know the elevator i know i know how the lift works and all that stuff but i couldn't name too many planes i do have a couple favorites though uh, my all-time favorite is the piper cub i love the piper club and i like the steerman um but they have today is the spring pancake 
breakfast um, thing going on. And you can see that, I mean, it's busy today. Um, but yeah, it's the fundraiser, pancake breakfast fundraiser. All right, I told you there would be pancakes. So a little confusing at the beginning, right? Maps, pancakes, but again, this is, it, it's really busy today. It's super busy today. Um, but again, when they have these events going on and they have them all the time, um, it's, it's an awesome place to come to and check out. Um, don't know if we can get onto the second floor today. I didn't ask because I don't see too many people up there. But when we're done with this, we'll, we'll check this out. Um, yeah, this is real cool. Most of it's outside. We're gonna, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you a little bit of everything here. But uh, I'm gonna finish these pancakes. And then after that, this video, I think will really take off. <laughs> Okay, done with the pancakes. They were actually pretty darn good. Everybody here that works here, some are just totally awesome people. But uh, we're gonna walk around now. And like I said, we'll, I'll show you what I can inside. This is the, this is the uh, actual inside museum here. And uh, like kind of a personal hangar here. Show you a little 360. Yeah, a lot of people busy, even up on the ceiling. We got planes. Love that American flag. I, I love that though, POW flag. But let's go see what there is to see. And I think I was talking to somebody. I think we can get up on that second level. So we'll be able to look down as well. There's a Susie Q. These are always, always cool right here. The little gunner gunner hold right there somebody would sit there like I said I can't really name what planes are but I will do this when we come to one so pause it and read it it's a B-26 always like the look at that Charlie's Jewel always like when they paint the sides prop Got the bombs underneath. Very cool. Army Jeep. Model airplanes. Oh, there's a turret right there. Even the colors. And they have everything painted. That's crazy. That is crazy. Look at that though. Nurse told you that uh, we may be uh, next to a uh, retired military nurse. And uh, here we are. <laughs> All right, we made it to the second floor. And check this out. As soon as you come up here, check this mural out. Look at that. Wow, ruptured duck. Wow, there we are behind the behind that big American flag. That is crazy awesome. All right, I wasn't sure if we could walk down this way, but I made sure we could. Check it out, all these rooms. Not all of them are open. Um, but look, Mohawk room. This is this is really cool in here, man. Wow. And I figured this may be the best way to show you um, some of the planes from up top. Uh, because again, man, if you look down, it's busy today. Look at that. Wow. That is awesome. And I down down there we got some turbo jets all right there's that plane we were looking at from down at the bottom that I think is not maybe it's a remote control I don't know if that's the one or not it's like a radar 
plane and that kind of target. yeah target that's what i meant it's a it's an actual target uh plane so it's not like a toy that's a real deal uh you know piece well, i think they got the lights on i see some blue lights right there I love looking at planes we'll go down here and look some more that's a test that's a, a, a test that you would sit in there like a pilot. Uh, pilots would sit in there and different, uh, different things would happen. Simulation. See, I told you I knew what the ailerons were and what they do. Right there. What do we got in here? Wow, those are some nice paintings. Wow. I haven't even been outside. Um, and I'm just amazed at, at this uh, museum. Wow. Yeah, I'm actually glad I can show you this, so... If you're out in the Akron, Canton area, um, definitely come and check this out. And it probably wouldn't be as busy as it is today. I mean, when they have an event going on, it, it is for sure. But um, wow, look at all the patches. Oh, check it out. Wow. It's the ejection seat. It's a rudder. Wow. Some different pictures, uh, Got Operation Overload, Operation Fortitude, Exercise Tiger, French Resistance. Yeah, a lot of history, a lot of history in this uh, building. Wow, man. Now again, we can't go that far. I think they're working on some of these areas as well, but. Uh, I guess we can go back down and uh, we'll focus on some of the airplanes now. Okay, yeah, let's get back. Let's get back downstairs. I'll show you some of the uh, some of the airplanes and then we'll go outside and check out those ones. Wow. So there was one more room up here. So before you go downstairs, let me give you a quick rundown. Um, to this one this is actually a pretty big room up here so i will kind of uh oh look at that it's a mannequin in there it's kind of creepy almost but you could spend a whole lot of time in here looking at some of the uh artifacts they have in here I would love to show you every thing, but we would have a really, really long video. Japanese flag right there. Yeah. Capture Japanese headquarters flag. Wow, okay. See, there's some really, really historic items in here. Wow. Oh wow, look at that. Wow. Yeah, so the price of admission, I was talking to somebody, it, it goes for the upkeep here. And uh, they do get grants and such. This is a non-profit. 
museum. Look at that hat right there. You know, did they, you know, my, my, my boys are all in the military, you know. Do they still do this kind of stuff? Because I, I don't see, I don't see like patches and stuff. Like, you know, I, you, you do when you look at the old, the old uh, uniforms and stuff like that. Look at this. Wow, those are some uh, old his historic fellas right there. Ohio people. Maybe it is Ohio. Maybe maybe this Mindy mentioned that this room was uh, honoring Ohio soldiers, but when I was reading at the beginning, it didn't seem like it. But she she may be right there. Can you say that again? She wants me to say that again, but I always. You know, once is good, right? <laughs> I want to show you this drum up here um, before we go downstairs. See, this is the kind of stuff I like, though. Right here, I like, I love these uniforms. Dude, look at that, man. That's that's just great. Cuban Anarchy Banner, say private collection, so a lot of private collections, especially in this uh, up here. But look at that drum, see, and then we got Canton, Ohio, so it may be. All right, we're back downstairs and check this out. You can actually, you can actually sit. Yeah, check this out. Look at that. Line it up. <laughs> Look at those. Wow, that's pretty sweet. Okay, this is actually a uh, yeah. This uh, this is what's happening right now. Right now, where we are. There's oh, this is Ohio right here. You can see this Ohio. Those are all the planes. What's it say again? Any aircraft in green or those flights departing? Wow, yeah. There's the there's a green one there. Wow, that's kind of, that's kind of cool. Oh yeah. That's pretty sweet. Wow. Yeah, that's awesome. Here's that trainer we were looking at from the second floor. Again, see that must have been, I don't know who Robert Hahn is, but you know, is he a, this might be from his private collection that he has. It's a simulator, a trainer. You see, it would do whatever it had to do. What spin, tilt. They would close you in there. A little light to go on the panels. It's pretty cool, huh? All right, here's another room. This one's called the Gallery of Heroes. And, uh, like I did upstairs, I'll kind of give you a quick, a quick walk through. Look at that. That's a cool, look at these patches, man. That is awesome. I love the, I love the, uh, the uh, military patches. Wow. But I'll give you a quick walk through, um, through here. Just the art in here is great. Always look up. Look at this. Spirit of 
Spirit of St. Louis. You can see that plane. Where, where did I say that was? D DC? I think that's hanging up in, in uh, DC. When I walked back down the line, I was standing next to the gentleman. He said, You talked to him about her in here. About you and Gina. Why were you talking to him? Wow. Rosie Derivator. I've never seen that. Look at that. <laughs> That's awesome. That's cool. There's a building right there. Wow. Wow. Oh, this right here, Goodyear. This I just passed coming here. The blimp hanger. I might have to come back again uh, just to go to the museum itself and just go through here and like in detail. You would never guess. You would never guess that it's this big in here. Yeah, you would never guess from outside that there's this much stuff in here. Yeah, so if you're a uh, if you're a war fan, like you like the war history, if you're a aviation fan, whatever this, and we haven't even been outside to look at the actual planes yet. Yeah, look at these jackets. Like I said, do they still do they still do this? Uh, with the jackets and the patches and stuff like that. I mean, I see it on T-shirts. I know, uh, I know when my boys graduated like basic and stuff and they had the, the, the t-shirts and stuff, you know, they had some, some tough prints and stuff like that, but you know, did they still do that? Satan's gal. I see there's a little uh, white sticker <laughs> over, over that. Yeah, they have movies playing. Look at these little pictures, man. Wow. Yeah, check that out. Just, just fun stuff, you know that? Caterpillar Club. If you come, oh, somebody's about to tell a story. Is it okay if we? If, is it okay to video it? Okay. Oh no, we're gonna hear a story. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay. 
Anybody here want to hear the story? Yep. Get ready. My name's Dave. I'm a tour guide up here at Maps, and you're in my Dave. spot. I keep telling you that you're in my spot. Okay, Dave. That's my spot. <laughs> Come on over. We don't bite. <laughs> okay, first of all, do we have any veterans in the group? Army. Army. Any other veterans? Great. Army. Okay, very good. Anybody else? See, there's only one service. It is the Army, and so <laughs> there ain't no sense even discussing the he's other things. <laughs> yeah, no, but he's the Army. No, but You know, people will tell me that. I, I did go to Vietnam. I didn't do this. And it really makes me mad when people do that. Because when you were in the Army, did you do what your commanding officer told you to do? Did you do what the government told you to do? If you did it, you did your job. I wish I'd have had that instead of the job I had. So never be ashamed of not going to combat. Now, now my preaching's over, we can all go home. <laughs> my name's Dave, I'm a tour guide up here. And ladies, you might want to have Kleenex, it's going to get weepy on you. Anybody here tell me how the United States of America got involved in World War II? Anybody? Pearl Harbor. I heard it somewhere. You? Pearl Harbor. Thank you. We're all in agreement? Yep. Mm -hmm. If we're in agreement, it's pro hard. You want to hear a good story? Come on. But they, they, they were in it before, but that's when they, they well, made we war. declared. That's when they made war on Pearl Harbor. If you want, come on up here. On this rifle, there's a chrysanthemum. It's a flower. Mm -hmm. See that flower? <clears throat> right there. See mm -hmm. it? That flower is a chrysanthemum. That flower represents the emperor of Japan. And during this period of time in history, the emperor of Japan was considered to be a living god. He could do no wrong. And the Japanese people believed it. But General MacArthur was a genius. General MacArthur allowed the Japanese soldier, if he surrendered, to file that off there. By filing that off there, the Japanese soldier was able to save a little face. Because when he surrendered, all he's doing now is turning in a piece of wood, a piece of metal, known as a gun. It has nothing to do with his emperor anymore because he filed it off. So he's saving a little face. So when I look at these guns right here, it tells me several things. First of all, it tells me this gun, these guns were captured in combat. They still have the chrysanthemum on there. Second of all, if I look very closely at those guns, I can actually tell they were captured in the Philippines. How? Oh. Thank you, you're my hero. <laughs> I can tell because my father captured these guns when he was with General MacArthur in the Philippines. Now the rest of the story. My father comes from a very small town called Nokomis, Illinois. During World War II, there were 500 people who lived in Nokomis. If you go there tomorrow to visit, there are still 500 people that live in Nokomis. It's a different 500, but 500 people. <laughs> it's a very small town. It sits in the middle of nowhere. It's corn country, and it'll always be there. But during World War II, there was an old farmer. And every man that went into combat, this farmer made him a fighting knife to carry. My father carried his knife all the way through the Philippines and all the way through the occupation of Japan. The night before I shipped out to go to Vietnam, my family was sitting at the kitchen table. My father, my mother, my brother, my wife, and we had a 10 day old baby girl. And my father looked at me and said, we must have a talk. I said, okay, fine, let's talk. Dad went, no, I can't have this conversation with you in front of your mother. We must go outside. So my father took me out to the very back of the yard. And when he got me back there, he reached behind his back. 
and he pulled out the fighting knife he'd carried all the way through World War II. And he said, son, now it's your turn. And here's the knife my father carried all the way through World War II. And I carried all the way through the Vietnam War. The reason this museum wants this knife on display is the history one knife can carry. It's been across the Pacific Ocean twice. It's fought in two major wars defending the United States of America. It was carried by a father and his son. That's you? That's what they tell me. <laughs> yeah, I've lost a little weight since then. I got it. Posh. Hey, David. Did, did every individual soldier file off his, his uh, um, book? No. It, book? The, Japanese, it, the Japanese were firm believers, and that's why they treated American soldiers so bad. You're much better off than, being, than to be a prisoner of war. And that's why the Japanese people felt It was more American. honorable to uh, So the Japanese soldier at that point in time had very, very, very no respect at all for Americans that surrendered. So yeah, there, there aren't that many Japanese that did themselves go up on side attacks and things of that nature yeah. knowing they were gonna die. Well, my question is on the mom itself. Like, I've got a couple that have the mum removed, right. and you know I, I get one that has the mum on it too. But did the individual remove the mum, or yes. was it an arsenal job? No, the individual did it before he surrendered. Okay. The one, the ones without the mum are worth half as much money as the one with them. Oh yes, yes. They're worth a lot more money with the mum. Thanks. If somebody gets an opportunity on May Fourth, if you're in this area. Take the walk in Maslin. Uh, Save 22, Israel. In the United States of America, like I said, every day, 22 veterans will commit suicide. We can't let these people do that. I was one of the 22. When I came home from Vietnam, I was pretty screwed up. I was an alcoholic. I'm not ashamed of it. That's how I got through the war. But I was an alcoholic. At that point in time, I was very fortunate in a way. My wife's a nurse. I was going to kill myself with a 12 gauge Mount 37 Ithaca shotgun. And my wife got a psychiatrist there. In 1970, we did not know what PTSD was. Not a clue. The doc came through the door. And at that given point in time, when he came through the door, he said, Boy, that's a beautiful shotgun. Can I see it? It was an Ithaca. Every farmer in the United States had one. They were just a good everyday hunting shotgun. I said, sure, if you want to see it, I handed it to him. He looked at me. He goes, you're faking this. Nobody's going to kill themselves. Hands a gun over it that easy. I said, Doc, I don't need that. I reached under the pillow, pulled out a 357 Magnum. I said, this does just as good a job as any shotgun. This was a Thursday night. Saturday morning, I agreed if he did not put me in a padded cell, I would come in for counseling. That was a Thursday night. Saturday morning rolled around. Ladies, no offense to you. But in 1970, if you were going out, you'd put on a dress, you'd put on hose, you'd actually probably put on heels. My wife got up to go to the doctor's office. I got up, put on a pair of cutoff shorts and a t-shirt. My wife looked at me and said, are you going to go? Are you going to get ready? I said, no, that guy's a quack. I don't need this nonsense. He's a quack. My wife went. She was gone for three hours. When she got home, like I say, I'm still an alcoholic at this point. I'm still quite hot from being up. And where in the hell have you been? She looked at me and said, you knew where I was at. I said, where have you been? She said, I was at the psychiatrist. You're going to tell me you were at the psychiatrist for three hours? She said, yeah, for three hours. I said, if you were there for three hours, what in the hell did you talk about? She looked me point blank in the eye and said, 
you'd have been interested, you'd have been there. To this day, again, she's a nurse. I don't know if she thought of that, the doctor. To this day, I don't know what happened in the first three hours. I was under his care for six months. I went every Wednesday night and every Saturday for six months. At the end of six months, the psychiatrist looked at me and he said, you're never going to be normal, but I've got you so you can live in society. He said, when you came in here six months ago, you had one emotion in your entire body. It was pure hatred. He said, but like I said, I've got you so you can live in society. I went probably 12, 13 years and never told my wife one time I loved her. Because if I did, it would open me up to get hurt. And nothing was ever going to hurt me again. Nothing. But as time went by, I started mellowing a little bit. I started getting some emotions back. And I'm very happy to say, last December, we've been married 55 years. Well, how old are you? I'm 76. I'm 80. Well, you look good for 80. <laughs> yeah, but I got just shingles in my head. <laughs> yeah, I got that on mine. <laughs> Wow, that's a head of hair, too. Yeah. If at this point in time, the lady was right where you're at, was standing there, and I said, the reason we made 55 years, I said, because I'm a saint. <laughs> and the lady right where you're standing right now looked at me, and she said, you know what? If you're a saint, your wife's got to be an archangel. <laughs> <laughs> and I did not argue with her. So thanks for listening to me. Please go on May 4th, if you would, to save 22. Take a walk. You'll get a picture of the person you're walking for, and you'll never forget that person. These people deserve to live. They don't deserve to die. All right, here. Army helicopter. And you can actually, you can actually sit inside. You can actually sit inside this. Oh man, check this out. You can actually sit inside here, and I, and I think if you, it moves in the back. So, look at that. Wouldn't know what to do. Wouldn't know what to do. Pretty cool, right? Yeah, check it out. Wow. Some more simulators over there. Yeah, that was pretty cool. And what a story we just heard, right? That was pretty cool. It gave you, almost gave you chills in there listening to him. Here's an old ambulance. Look under the wing right there. Got the ailerons down. Check the, uh, check that out over there. ML school bus. That actually reminded me of what was what was the cartoon? A magic school bus? Yeah, the magic school bus. That that's a cool graphic right there on that plane over there. That's insane. That's cool. Martin Airplane. And that is the Martin Glider. Pause it and read it. Which is right up there but I do like this biplane I do like it kind of remind, reminds me of a Sturman but oh there's the ambulance I don't know if you're going to be able to read that if you pause it 
But check out the uh, glider up there. Look at that. All right, this is pretty cool right here. Pause it, read it. This is underneath the blimp. How are you today? Good, good. Check this out. This is awesome. All the Goodyear stuff. All up in, all up in Akron. We'll go in here because I've never been. I've never been in here, but there's that, there's that glider. There's the Martin glider right in front of us. Check this out. Spirit of Akron. I've never been in. Well, that would be kind of, I don't know if I'd be scared going in the blimp. Check this out though, man. That'd be crazy. What That would be a insane view wow wow this is awesome yeah check this out this would be really i don't know man i think i'd be nervous if we were in the air in this it'd be cool maybe you have no choice but to like look out <laughs> and uh i don't like heights all that much wow. this is bigger than i thought it would be though that's pretty cool yeah how cool is that inside right wow The other side all right we made it outside there's the front maps air museum right there so yeah there's planes we'll take a walk through here see what we can see with those i think some of them we can go inside but uh this is pretty cool right here we got the field hospital we'll check this out in here Welcome to the hospital. How are you? I'm good. All right. You got a question, you speak up. This is my personal display. Oh, okay. Most of the pictures in here are me, not all of them. I'm the good looking one. Okay, okay. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. So all this is your private collection yeah. then? Yeah. Wow. Got to be careful what kind of hobby you get. <laughs> yeah, I see. That's a lot of, yeah. <laughs> That's a lot of stuff. Wow. So yeah, one uh, one man's personal collection. That is crazy. Look, wow. Look at this. Oh no. <laughs> wow. That. This is a lot. Look at that blood bank. Wow, look at... Wow. I did get new glasses. I don't know if anybody could tell. They're not broken anymore. But uh, I actually get to read that bottom line again. My other ones were like, they were so scratched up. I couldn't, I could barely see. Uh, look at that. Keeping the spooky vibes. Still keeping the spooky vibes going. Uh, patient number two. Wow, he has a lot, a lot of stuff in his collection. This reminds me of uh, 
kind of mash a little bit. Hey, uh, speaking, speaking of mash, right here, here we go. Didn't even see that when I said that. So hot lips right there. Yeah. That's great. Wow. All right, let's check out some of these planes right now. Like I said, I can't name them, but I will do this when we come up to them and uh, pause it, read it. This is really cool that they have this, that you can check these out. And this one you can't go inside, but I can show you as much as I can. Wow. This is really neat how you can walk through these. On the other side, got some helicopters. I think you can actually go in this one. Look at the painting on the side. That's pretty wild. Are you going to take it down? I think you can go, yeah, you can go inside them as well. Here is the uh, H1 Cobra. All right, let's let's go in here and sit in this. Check this out. Wow, these seats are so crazy, crazy small. <laughs> they're so they're so small, <laughs> small in here. Comfortable though. I think I'd be comfortable flying in here. Wow. Check that out. Now, the only person that I know, I don't know, he didn't fly helicopters, he flew jets, is my cousin Mike. He was in the Air Force. Look at the Cobra. Yeah, I think my cousin Mike was the only one in the Air Force. Ugh. Man, those are tight. Yeah, look at that. Thunder Chief. There's uh, where it would fuel up when it's flying. Alright, check this one out. Get out of your way. Oh, you're fine. You're fine. I didn't know which way to go. Check this out. I think this is one you can go inside. Look. Well, air, air would flow right in there. Look at that. I think, I think we can go in this one as well. Oh, yeah. They have a lot, there is a lot of planes, a lot of uh, full on, you know. Hands on type. Yeah, of hands on uh, planes here. I actually hear it's a plane somewhere. Oh, there it is right there, going up. Yeah, check it out, there it is right there. Away it goes. Let's check this one out. Oh man, this one's even, man. Look at this. Wow. You can get in if you want. I'm gonna, I'm gonna try, man. Okay. <laughs> you step on the way. Okay, yeah, I wasn't sure of that either. Wow, these are, 
these are tight, man. Wow, these are crazy. Wow, check this out. Look how, look how tight this is, man. So the, wow. The, uh, some of the controls are working. So if you put your feet on the pedals, okay, down in there, you're gonna yeah. work the rudder back there. Oh, yep, there it is. You guys see it? Yeah. And then take the stick up and back. It'll work your elevators in the tail. I think you can see yeah. the elevator elevator going. Yeah, you, you have to push it all the way. Up. And then side to side is your ailerons. Your oh, head. okay, there's the ailerons going. Oh, that is cool. So the ailerons, planes, it makes it bank. So, yeah, bank. So. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. That is. Do you need me to hold that while you're getting I'm, out? I'm good. Now nah, I, I should be able to get it. It is tight. It's funny because these are these are tight in here. Wow, that is like seriously. These are like really really tight in here. Okay. Now I'm gonna try to get out of here. Yeah. So I mean, once you're once you're in a lot of these, they're. Uh, they're comfortable actually you know but getting in and out my knees don't like it no more <laughs> like i like i said once you're in it it's you know it's comfortable but yeah having to get back out no, big no, deal. no. <laughs> so as long as you're taking a bunch of video yeah uh, watch your head, duck down, and you'll be able to see the Bombay of the A26 there. Okay, so you can go fake. underneath it. Yeah, there's, okay. they're fake, but they're okay. Yeah, okay. Bobs are in there. I appreciate it. Thank uh -huh. you. Sure Thank you. Thing. Yeah, everybody that's that I ran into that work, you know, that works here so far, just awesome, awesome information, awesome stories, awesome people. Yeah, he said we can go underneath this one and check out the Bombay, which we will. But I'll show you here the A26 Invader. Look at that. Yeah, you can, we'll, we'll go check it out. We'll go check underneath it. But yeah, this is, check it out. This is where they would sit. Check this out. Here, check this out. This is, this is cool. Now these, these aren't real. But yeah, there's the mom bay right there. Wow, that is cool. Dude, this is awesome. <laughs> this is this is insanely cool wow yeah look at that we're just right underneath the plane man wow and there's gary's lady <laughs> very cool All right, I don't know what this exactly is. It looked like <laughs> a bird did something there, <laughs> but here we go right here. This one, you can't go in, but I like that. And then this right here, the Blue Angels. Now, I'm not sure. Um, I'll have to read about this one again. I don't know. This is the actual plane that they use, the type of plane that they use, but I think they had to get permission to paint this and, and do the paint scheme of the Blue Angels. I think. Um, I'm pretty sure um, that was the case but let's see oh, okay that's the landing gear right there yeah prowler i think we can go in this one 
We can actually, well, we can look. We can look in it. I don't know if you can see in there. Just kind of tin it out. other side Got the foldable wings All right, we'll keep walking and if I can look into them I'll look into them this F14 call Tomcat S.S. Harry S. Truman. Look at the uh, rudder in the back. They have some really cool, really cool planes here. And it, it isn't, I mean, you know, it isn't big, but uh, they have a lot of stuff packed in here. And this one we can go and look in. you can see in there yeah small cockpits oh look at that you can see all the way through that check that for the airflow that's crazy wow Corsair Here's an F-11 Tiger. I think what's cool on this one, look at the names on that side. Lieutenant Neil Armstrong on that side. And then if we come over here, there is Colonel John H. Glenn. And Mindy would tell you that, what would you tell them? They're the moon guys. They were the moon guys. This is cool. Check that out. I'm, I'm digging these, uh, digging these, the art on the planes. F9F 8P Cougar. I think we can climb up here and look inside this one. A lot of these windows are faded, but they're probably, I would imagine these windows are thick, right? Yeah, see how the windows, I don't know, like, what it looks like from the inside if you were looking out the windows. Are they just, they just old, they faded, are they thick, you know, can you see? Well, you know what, I guess when you fly a plane, you really don't, you use your instruments. I think you need to see. You know, well, yeah, you need to see, but I think a lot, I don't know, it just seems like it'd be hard to see out of the windows, because it's hard to see in. That's a low, low profile one right there. I didn't even see what that was. I didn't see anything for it. I think these are just like... These could be somebody's private stuff right here. It's only a couple of them have these things. I think I see a... Oh no, that's the seat. I thought I seen a helmet. Right there. Another one that you can walk up to. And this would be, pause it, read it. Oh wow, this one gets like way above it, wow. Oh, check, man, look how deep. I don't know if you can see that. Look how deep down that seat is. <laughs> That's crazy. Satellite spinning up there, here in the radar. 
T33A shooting star. Yeah, I wonder how many of these planes are owned by, you know, just a individual. Kind of like that paint scheme right there. All right, walking across the parking lot. Now, I don't think we can get into any of these to look at down this row. So we'll just walk by them. But yeah, here's a here's a fuselage uh, right there, and the wings, low wing. Look at the uh, the sticker up there. There's a skull up in there. Oh, they have these are actually like dollies here holding those up. Wow, that's crazy, man. Look at. You can see it's Snoopy with the gun back there on the side. Wings full. That that is crazy. That's crazy. Substandard. Yeah, I'm digging. I'm digging the uh, the art. I really like the art. Oh, look at the bubbled out bubbled out window side window US Air Force it's a T-37 there should be another plane actually right there going somewhere it's actually a nice day today. There it is. It's a Delta Dagger. I like this. Probably where they where they fuel. A thirty seven Dragonfly. What's that say? Wolfhounds over there, the decal. Yeah, they keep those in there when it's sitting still. Oh, look at that one back there. Yeah, see how it says remove before flight. So that right there is that. Hopefully I got that so you could read it. That sun is bright today. It's really, really bright out. Look at that, yeah. Wow. It's cool to see these close up. Now I'm not tall enough, but is there anything in there? I don't know. I'll see when I edit the video. This one here. I hear another plane. Oh, shady. Ruptured duck. Wasn't that that was that was inside, wasn't it? On the wall painting. Yeah, on the wall painting, the ruptured duck. I think we can go in this one. I see some steps over there. Yeah, that sun's coming down. I'm glad, man. It's been a while. C-47 Skytrain. All right, yeah, we get to, uh, I think we can go in that one or at least see it because I see some steps. What's happening, guys? Hi. All right. 
Oh, a Royal Enfield. That's cool. That's awesome. Oh yeah, you can't go inside. Got the chain anchored. Must be hot in here because I hear the fans going. Oh man, cool. And, whoa. <laughs> oh man, we are at an incline. You feel, you feel the incline coming up here? You can, wow, you could feel the incline up here. Like I'm, I'm actually, my knees are, my knees are like bent to walk up here. Wow. Gotta, this must be if somebody's, well, I don't know. Do they sleep in these or is that when somebody's hurt? Yeah, because, well, yeah, probably when somebody's hurt. Here's the, uh... Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, there's a big incline. Well, because everything needs to go out to walk back yeah. to work. Yeah. No, this, this size compared to that one we were just in. Yeah, look at this. Just, I don't know, for some reason this stuff looks just scary. It, it'd be like scary to fly or something. Wow. That is very, very cool. And yeah, there's from up this part. Wow, that was that was pretty cool in there to go see. If you're not, if you don't go in planes every day, it's it's pretty cool. All right, almost done showing you the planes. All right, I think these are going to be the last three that we are going to want to see. What's that over there? fighter squad yeah check the B out kind of tall fighter squad right in the midst yeah check the skull out over there too Ohio Air Guard. And I think this is going to be the last one that we're going to go check out. Now these fly where I live. I'm by the Vienna Airport in Ohio. And these are the types of planes that fly like super, super low um, over over my house because they do the practice landings. But yeah, we'll be able to go in this one. Well, make sure you watch your head. Oh, okay. I see. I see. Okay, we can walk up. I'll check this out. That's cool. Very awesome. A little bit, bit of a bigger one. Yep, and the seats. Got 
got the uh, Ohio burgy hanging up. Not a flag, a burgy. How's it going? Good. You? Good, good. There's what it looked like. Yeah, these look crazy big, crazy big when they're flying over your house. So that was pretty cool inside. Oh, look. They must be done, actually. We got that just in time. Look. Man, is that how you got to lift that up, man? Because let me tell you what. <laughs> that's a workout. That lever right there is lifting that up. You know what, though? Maybe that. Maybe that's just a manual way to do it. Maybe if that's running... Uh, they can act you know maybe they can do that uh electronically or hydraulically or whatever because that's a, that, that would be a workout lifting it up there look at that wow okay yeah he can have fun with that but uh yeah maps air museum akron canton airport easy to find you can put it in your search map and it will bring you right here to it. It won't take you to the airport at all. You know what I mean? Like the main answer, it'll take you right here. All right, so that was everything here. Um, I tried to do a short video. I, I haven't edited it yet, so I don't know how long it is, but um, we, got a, we got a story uh, in there as well. So I didn't want to leave that out. I thought that was great. Uh, to listen to his story in there. Um, Canton, Ohio, at the Akron Canton Airport, we are at the Maps Museum. Um, normally $15 to get into, and that goes for restoration, it goes for, you know, keeping the lights on and stuff this is this is kind of like a self-funded you know uh museum uh i'm gonna put a link like i said in the description they have a lot of events coming up so be sure to check them out i know that like i said they do that they i think a couple weeks ago they had the knife show they have uh they have a hunting and fishing they have a car show coming up which I think would be a pretty cool uh, backdrop for the cars. So yeah, not far from like the Youngstown area. I, I was talking to some people. They even came up from Columbus uh, up here to see this. Good time. But I, again, today was the pancake benefit uh, breakfast. And that was 12 bucks. So... A little cheaper than a 15 and that included the museum so you get to see all this it's busy today normally I don't think it would be that busy we came past here before and like there was they weren't in this parking lot they were in the other parking lot so I think I hear oh a helicopter all right awesome awesome so yeah i want to thank everybody for coming on today's adventure um i will be leaving next week for oklahoma so i may have some oklahoma videos coming up um i'll be going to lawton oklahoma so watch out for those of course i got next weekend i'll have to see maybe though don't know what don't know what videos coming up next weekend but uh Thanks for coming on today's flight with me. I think it was pretty awesome here.
if you're in if you're in the area definitely come and check this museum out but hit the like button hit the subscribe button share the channel leave a comment i read all the comments try to answer them all and uh until i see you on the next adventure wherever that may be bad malenge